again, it's April here, and today I've got a super fun video where I delve deep into the world of clay pins. So I don't know if you have seen these little faces that I've made, I've popped them up on Instagram over the last week, and I decided to turn them into clay pins. So the first thing I did is grab all of the designs off of Procreate and print them out and I decided to do it this way because I really loved how these faces turned out and I wanted to keep them as similar as I could from the kind of design to the pin. So I decided to cut them out so I could kind of trace them onto the clay. And these are all the little faces that I'm going to try to make into pins. Okay, I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I'm gonna try and do this on my camera, microphone. So to make the pins, I have some baking paper for rolling out just so my desk doesn't get messy, because <laughs> it's so clean. Um, a scalpel for cutting. Uh, I've got a rolling pin. Got some of these uh, pretty cheap modeling tools from Hobbycraft, but I'm sure you can get them in any like art supply shop but even if we use these and then most importantly we have the white clay so this is air dry clay it's from hobby craft they did have a more expensive clay but it was like half of this so i'm gonna just try this i figured clay is clay and hopefully it kind of works the same so yeah let's just um just give it a go and i'm just gonna be bouncing back from past april to present april so i hope that's okay with you guys um, I actually really have started to love recording my voice as I'm doing stuff. It makes it so much easier to edit. So that's kind of what I'm trying to get into. But anyway, this is um, some super interesting footage of me rolling out the clay. Okay, so I just rolled it out. I'm not quite sure how thick it needs to be, but it's like maybe five, six millimeters. So I'm just gonna try that. Did cut around these, so I'm hoping that I've left enough room because I think when I come to happen to like smooth it out and stuff, I may be making it a little bit smaller. But this is just the first batch. We can always make some more. I don't think that we're gonna fit on here. So we'll just do a few, maybe five. Yeah, let's do five. Um, I'm, I'm just worried I'm gonna get these mi mixed up. Um, they're kind of all different shapes, I guess. Okay, so I was gonna just show you the clay because look, I've made, if this works out, I would have made eight and I've still got a good more than four fifths of the clay left. So if this works out, this clay, if you guys live in England, um, might be worth it. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to wrap this up in some cellophane just to keep it from drying out and yeah, hopefully keep it nice and moist. I know that's a gross word, I'm sorry. So all I'm going to do now is I've got a little bit of water here and I'm just going to try and smooth out the edges and then we'll leave it to dry. So yeah, just have a play with it and try and keep, get it nice and smooth, I guess. That's the goal. And I actually think I may have rushed this process a little bit because the final clay objects come out a little bit like rough. So if you're doing this, take your time to smooth it all out. All right, so I think that's smooth enough for the first one. I'm just gonna show you, forgot to mention it, but I have some pins that I got from Amazon. So I got a hundred of these for, I think it was like three pound. And I've seen a couple of videos where they stick it in before and then they say that because this is made of metal and with the clay it might uh, oxidize and rust. Um, but I've seen some people paint over them and they said that's fine or they like stick it in and they super glue it. I don't know, we're, gonna, we're just gonna try and stick it in for the first time. I've gotta remember which is the back. Okay, this is the back. Um, like, like that, I guess. All right, so gently stick it in. Oh, bloody hell. 
Okay, so that's stuck in. You know what? I don't know if this is going to be thick enough. It feels like really skinny. Um, and it's like bumping up there because of the pin. Oh, I don't know if I should stick it in afterwards. I also saw someone put clay inside of it and like almost hide it in the... So they like got the, the clay like this. So it like bakes in. Not bakes in, but you know what I mean. Hmm. Alright. <laughs> no, I don't like that. <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, maybe I should just super glue it on at the end. I don't know. Oh, God. I thought this was going to be easy. I've got all of my pins done. Um, they're upside down. Hopefully they don't stick. I'm not quite sure if to leave them on this or move them onto something else. Um, and then I put the little faces on top because I definitely will forget who was who. So yeah, um, I'm going to leave these to dry for maybe a couple of days and then paint them during the week. I guess I've got to wait now to see if they work. Uh, I think it's been three days since I dried these. Uh, I sent the packet to, well, sent the website to wait four or five days, but I couldn't wait. Most of them turned out okay. Some of them are like curved. If you can see that, I think that's just from where it's uh, dried, like on bent like this. I don't know, a bit weird. The pins seem to be in there okay. So that's pretty cool. So I got most of them the right way around. This one here, I accidentally put the pin on the wrong side so I'm not quite sure what to do with this one because it was meant to be like two little kissing faces so now it, it's looking the wrong way and then this one here I put the pin on uh like sideways so not perfect but these are just like a first kind of test to see how they go so next up they're quite smooth but I did see, I was watching another video and they sandpapered them. So I have some sandpaper here and I'm just going to give them just a little sandpaper. And then I'm going to use this gesso just to give them a coat. Maybe I'll do another coat tomorrow if they're, they're dry. Uh, just to kind of, I'm not sure if it'll work, but just to maybe give them a coat in. So, I don't even know why I'm doing this. You can't really see, it's just a white block. Um, just to give them a bit of a coating so the paint doesn't soak in as much. So I've sanded them all just really roughly. And actually, it did make quite a difference with the smoothness. So I think if I was gonna try and make these in the future, maybe to sell my Etsy shop. Um, I might might be a little bit more careful and also I kind of want to see if I can get uh, them not to curve when they dry so I'm gonna have to just play around with that and see if I can get that done in the future but for now um, what I'm gonna do is tidy up a little bit and uh, gesso them and then for the rest of the process, I decided to watch Netflix. So I'm going to be taking over the voiceover. Um, I gessoed them all. I don't really know if this is super necessary. Um, I did find the paint went on really nicely and it didn't soak into the clay at all. So it could have been the gesso. I don't know. If you have it, use it. If not, I don't really know if it matters or not. I decided to use the acrylic gouache, which I really love, the Holbein acrylic gouache. And right now I'm just mixing up some skin tones. So I don't really have any dark colors in the acrylic gouache. I only have like super light colors. And I really wanted to have um, a different like mixture of different tones. So if I do this in the future, I'll probably grab a few browns and kind of like purples and make up my own darker skin tones. And I don't think I mentioned it, but I actually traced the images on, as you can see. So I kind of did that trick where you flip the page over, you draw on the back of it, you flip it back around again, and then you draw over the original lines. So it kind of, um, it's not really tracing, but it's transferring the lines. I think it worked well in this case, but if I'm going to make clay pins in the future, 
I think it's probably best to kind of just go with the flow and paint them without all of this fuss because not only do you see the pencil lines at the end, there's just like a lot of work. Maybe these pins have a little bit too much detail in and I should go with something a little bit more simpler because the painting took so long. It took like maybe, I did it over a week, but I probably spent about four hours painting just because it's so tedious. You have to do a couple of coats on each of the layers and it was super fun, but at the same time, you guys probably have known from my past videos, I'm not the most patient person in the world. I'm kind of a little bit slapdash. So it was definitely a lesson in patience. And this pin that I'm doing right now is my favorite. She's called Pippa. And if you go to my Instagram, I actually have a little backstory for each of these characters or a little kind of personality trait about them. And I thought that was the most fun when I was uploading to Instagram, kind of coming up with a little, like a little bit about their personality. And for most of the pins, I tried to keep the colors similar to what I did in Procreate. So I kind of used the Procreate doodles as a kind of color comp so I could test out the colors. And I actually made a color palette in Procreate that's the same colors as my gouache. And I'm gonna just keep adding to that color palette the more gouaches I get, gouache -i? the more paints I get because I really love kind of um, keeping the same color palette in digital and in traditional. I think it kind of brings everything together. And in the future, that's something that I really want to look into kind of breaking down my color palette and coming up with a more kind of personal color palette, but that's for another day. These are the finished pins. I think they look pretty cute. You can see they're all finished here. I did the white bits with a white gel pen and then um, some of it with pencil. Like the little smiles I did with the colored pencil just because my painting skills aren't as that good to go that thin. But now I'm gonna use this Mod Podge to um, put a gloss on them. So finish these bad boys off. And another thing I would definitely change is changing my Mod Podge. So this is the Gloss Mod Podge. I didn't realize that you could get a matte Mod Podge as well. So I think I want to use the matte one in the future because these bad boys are a little bit shiny. You can see the streaks from the Mod Podge, but I think overall they turned out really cute and I love them. I even wore this one to work the other day on my shirt, which was super cute. So those are all the finished pins. I really love them and I definitely want to do more in the future. Let me know if you have any tips, if you've done these before, to help me out on my next batch and hopefully I will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.